In his first letter to Timothy, the Apostle Paul gave this warning. Keep your conscience clear, for some people have deliberately violated their conscience. As a result, their faith has been shipwrecked. That verse speaks of the danger of ignoring one's conscience. But what is a conscience? In Greek, the language of the New Testament, the word for conscience is sunedesis. It refers to a function given at birth to every soul, believer and unbeliever alike. In its purest, unpolluted form, it intuitively tells people what our God regards as right and wrong. To the Christians in Rome, Paul wrote of the universality and the purpose of conscience when he said, God's law is written in their hearts. For their own conscience and thoughts either accuse them or tell them they are doing right. Conscience is popularly defined as that still, small voice within us that tells us what is right and what is wrong, and which urges us to do the right and commends us when we do. When ignored, a properly functioning conscience creates within one a sense of guilt. The purpose is to move one to recognize their sin, repent of it, and begin doing what pleases God. But conscience is an imperfect guide, for it can be ignored, but not with impunity. The more one's conscience is ignored, the weaker it becomes, and the less able it is to tell one what is right and what is wrong. When over a long period of time, conscience is persistently and totally ignored, it can die. Paul spoke of people who had ignored their conscience to the point of becoming seared with a hot iron. But when a hot iron was used to cauterize a bleeding wound, all feeling in the cauterized area was dead. One who, over time, persistently ignores their conscience can cause it to cease to function, to die. We call those who have done so sociopaths or psychopaths. So, if you're a Christian, we ask, how's your conscience? Is it strong? Or have you maybe allowed it to become weaker by ignoring it? Have you paid more attention to our secular culture and his worldview than to God and his word? If so, God, who loves you more than you know, and who wants you to experience ever-increasing peace and joy in this life, has something to say to you. He says, keep your conscience clear, and it will be. If you strive to know and follow God's Word and the Holy Spirit who inspired it. Paul wrote to the Galatians, Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives, and then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in your lives. Love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If as a Christian you are experiencing less of the latter and more of the former. Again, God says, keep your conscience clear. 
or some people have deliberately violated their conscience. As a result, their faith has been shipwrecked. So, how's your conscience?